Hi, my name is Luke and welcome to the Healthy with Luke channel. This is a very humorous, entertaining and informative film about how to water all your hanging plants indoors. So, have fun! Number one, if you are a short person, you need to enlarge on yourself. Of course, you can get yourself a chair to stand on, but a easier solution might be to get a long cotton plant hanger as I did. I'll link the ones I used in the description. I think I paid around 15 euros for four, which should be around $17. Second, you could connect your hanger with your hook by using a stable rope to adjust the height of your plants. However, regardless of the height and the following three tricks, you always want to make sure that your plant is living in good soil which keeps most of the water inside the plant, as this will reduce the water dripping out. Now, the easiest method to prevent your hanging plants from dripping onto your precious carpet. Sticky, a carpet cleaner and the pot. Oh. <laughs> is to place them into your planters. Nice. The pro is that all the excess water lands in the pot and not on the floor. And the con is that you have to get rid of the excess water in the pot every once in a while, especially when you have long roots as you don't want them to lay inside the water. But hear me on this. You can make your life easier when you don't give your plants huge amounts of water as more water will run through the soil then, but rather giving it small portions with a few seconds of pausing in between. If you don't want to use planters, you also can place little terracotta plates under your plant, which again will catch the excess water. Just make sure the edges are elevated to prevent the water from running over the edges. Some also recommend using plastic plates, but in regard to our environmental issues, this seems totally nonsense to me. Plastic free, plastic free. Second, and I talked about this method already on this channel, you also can use ice cubes to water your hanging plants. Don't worry, they won't shock the roots. At least it never happened with mine. And I tried this method really, really often. But what happens exactly here? By placing the ice cubes onto the soil, the soil gradually absorbs the water from the ice cubes as it melts. This process is so slowly that the water is more or less unable to drip out of your plants. You even can fertilize your plant with this method by pouring the fertilizer to your watering can and then transferring it into the ice cube form. At the moment, I'm giving a natural fertilizer a try. I just soak organic bananas in water for a few days and then add them to my plants. Uh, Luke without the skin. Third, you also can take one by one into the shower and just water them there. This might sound like a lot of effort, but the good thing with this method is that you give them such a good and great soak that they will be satisfied for at least a couple of days. Oh, hello! Of course, this also depends on the room temperature and the season and the plant, but if I give my Ripsardis or Philodendron plants a good soak, they usually can live up to six to seven days of that water until they need to be rewatered. Rewatered, is that actually a word? Don't know, but sounds good. However, if you don't want to follow all of these methods, you might as well just want to water your plants and put a pot underneath to catch the excess water. <laughs> but I think the easiest and by the way the prettiest method is to get yourself really nice planters in the shop. And to be honest, choosing planters for me is the favourite part of this entire houseplant thing. But before you leave, my very last tip for you is to get a hanging plate like this one. You possibly could place all your hanging plants on a tablet, which then catches the water and then place it onto this beautiful hanging plate. This isn't only practical, but very beautiful and decorative too. Thank you so much for watching the entire video to the end. And I hope I see you again next week for next week's video. And stay healthy <laughs> with Luke.